detailed or enlarge an image, only to find it spoilt by severely reducing the resolution, making the photo unusable. Well, of course, there's lots of software out there to help you out, but only to a degree and with pretty mixed results until now. After using Topaz Gigapixel AI, I've been blown away by the ability to upscale my images by a staggering 600% without any loss of resolution. And this tool even adds an extra pop to the image into the bargain. Now, don't just take my word for it. Keep watching as I demonstrate just how good this tool is. Hi, I'm Ken Hatfield. Welcome to my Better Photography channel. demonstrated the two other Topaz tools I use in my workflow in previous videos, but I think I've saved the best to last. As a wildlife photographer, I often have to crop my images, especially bird images which are often just too small in the frame to produce commercially usable images. But since using Gigapixel, I've been able to revisit previously discarded images and turn them into the size and quality needed to upload to stock photo sites like Shutterstock and Get the Images increasing my earning potential substantially. It's so good, I even test out my finished images to see if it adds anything to the quality. And you know, surprisingly, it often does. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button before we get straight into processing these two images in real time so you can see for yourself just how good this tool is. Okay, so as you can see, I've already opened up Gigapixel. I've opened it up from the standalone app rather than using the plugin I have with Photoshop. The reason will become clear in a short while. So what I've done is I've already pre-selected two images to show you, one of which is my own, which I've just produced this afternoon, and the other one is one that I downloaded from the Topaz website. On the actual website itself, on the download page, they very kindly give you some options to download images to play with them yourself to show that they haven't been doctored in any way and that you'll get exactly the same results on your computer as they have done in the studio and chosen to demonstrate on their website. So basically this is what you get. This is the interface. You know that it's not complicated if you look at it as little sections. The first section up here is the viewing area where you'll see various views. Now, you may have already noticed down in the blue box here that even as I was talking there, the program was working. In fact, it's actually, if you look at this box here, it's actually doubled the size of the image already. It's rendered it, and you'll have to keep an eye on that all the time because it often re-renders the image depending on what process you're doing with the program. So at the top here, we've got a single view, and I'm going to take that up to 100%. Now again, this is going to re-render. Look at the bottom there, you'll see it re-rendering. It's re-rendering in the standard model, which as you can see here, which is where I like to start off. And what it's showing me here is the original, if I press on that, as opposed to the finished image that, that it's just rendered. As you can see, already it's doubled the size, improved the quality of the image. So let's go up to four times. This again, It'll take a second or two to render. While we're rendering there, I'll show you another of the viewers. You'll not see the split view. And the split view will move the rendering information across to this side. And again, by scribing that across the image, you get an idea of the effect that it's had on the photograph. Yeah, if you look at the detail in the hair, this is already incredible. It's already massively improved a picture that we thought was great to start off with. Let's push it up. To six times again it's going to re-render it's re-rendering in the standard mode and we're viewing it in the split view option and again you can just see what it's done that is uh, fairly amazing this is an image that's six times larger than when we started we started off at 1920 by 1280 and here we are at 11,520 by 7680 brilliant i'm going to take it back down to two times because i'll reduce the rendering speed for me to show you some of the other stuff here Again, on the viewing section up here, uh, we now have side-by-side -side view. Uh, once again, it will re-render. It's worth the wait, though. Now, you can see side-by-side -side the difference of the image that's been actually doubled in size. The next one is a great one. It's called a comparison view. This is uh, something that Topaz are very good at. Again, it's going to re-render each of the four little boxes here. And what you'll notice is there's five models that you can look at. The standard lines that one it basically is for kind of suggested for architecture and buildings where the straight lines 
art and CG. That's kind of anything that's like a cartoony type of thing. And uh, low resolution, obviously, if you bring an image in low resolution, you can use that to see if you can improve. But And also very compressed. So if you've already brought an image in that has been cropped dramatically, then very often the very compressed will work very well for you. So here you can have a look. And what we're looking here is a standard lines, art CG, and very compressed, which means the low resolution is not shown. That's no problem. What I tend to do then is for the look for the one I don't like very much, which is that one, highlight it and it'll come up as a blue uh, box there. And then you can go into low resolution and it'll then bring the low resolution in there for you to have a look at to see whether you think that one's any better. Now looking at that, I would be quite happy with the standard. So if I highlight the standard, I can go back to the single view and basically that is the image that I would like to go ahead with. Now then, what I want to do now is show you some of the other things down here. As I say, we've got the different scaling. You can do a scale, the scale by two times four, which you've already seen by six times. You've got the width, so you can nominate the width in centimeters, inches, or pixels, and also the height. So you can nominate naturally the size of the image that you want it to resize to, rather than just go for a multiples of two, four, and six times. Further down here, you've got uh, some settings here, which really are just to, to help things along a bit. And you're really getting a little bit of the other two Topaz programs, the Denoise and the Sharpen. So you get an option to do some noise reduction and some sharpening. Not as good as the main standalone programs, but enough to get you out of trouble. The additional settings on the bottom here, you can reduce the colour bleed if you get any bleed of colour out from the main subject into the background. And here's face refinement, which is pretty good if you're doing a close-up of someone's face, because what this does is it asks the program to look at facial features and it will enhance the eyes and the mouth in particular to make a better portrait. The reason why we didn't bring this up as a plugin from Photoshop is the crop tool here is not available through Photoshop plugin. You've got to bring it in as a standalone. It's a great crop tool, though, very simple. You can actually pick the original size, you can go to a square and you can bring that across. And there's all the different aspect ratios you can use here, which you can then move the arrows there to turn that there, and you could actually save it as a picture in that aspect, which is a really nice image. I'll leave it as it was, because I think I quite like it as it was. So we'll go back to the original, and we'll cancel that out. We won't do the crop. And that's ready to save. It's a nice image, and that's exactly what it looks like on Topaz's uh, page. The next one I'm going to bring in, and I'm going to do this more quickly because now we know where the controls are. So I've brought this image in that I processed this afternoon, and already it's doubled the size. So already it's done a pretty good job. So if I go up to 100% and allow it to re-render, you can actually see that it's done a smashing job there. And as you can see there, the single view I can do an original and the finished effect, the original and the finished effect. Now, to me, if I look more closely at the nest, it's getting a wee bit of strange effects on, on the edges of these bits of grass. So I think we need to go and look at a, a, a different model. And looking from knowledge, this is pretty compressed because I, it's already been cropped heavily. So I'm gonna try the very compressed and re, it's gonna re-render now. And hopefully see, now look what's happened there. It's actually got rid of all those little artifacts on the edge of the grass and it's turned that into a really nice image. And once again, we can go up as high as six times it's again going to re-render, but this should show you exactly the power of this particular tool because look at that. That's gone from 990 by 1400 pixels to 5940 by 8400 in this picture. And that's original. It's sharpened it up, brightened it up, and made it look amazing. So that I'll be very happy to be able to offer to a magazine or you know to be published anywhere. Previously unusable, too small, it's allowed uh, me to make the image into a usable working image, and I couldn't be happier. And now it's ready to go off to my bank of photographs and shut a stop and get the images. Amazing. So, that's the last of my three go-to tools used to resize, sharpen, and remove noise from images which just need a little something to make them stand out from the crowd. 
these demonstrations show just how easy it is to use Topaz Gigapixel AI, Sharpen AI and Denoise AI. They've saved the day for me many times and allowed me to take lots of images out of storage and into my Keepers folder. So why not give them a try? There's a link to a 30 day free trial for all the three tools in the description below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you get a notification when I post the next video. See you next time on the Better Photography Channel.